In my last video, I did fragrances that you could buy at Sephora and stores alike. Now I realized that there are many fragrances and I couldn't fit them all into one video. So here are some more fragrances that you could pick up at your local stores that are really good and I think you should get your nose on or maybe even have in your collection. If you're interested, come on. Hey everyone, I'm Peter from Centrail. On this channel, we talk about fragrances, designer, niche, perfumers, and we discover new fragrances. And sometimes we do lists, so on and so forth. So if you're into fragrances, or you just wanna smell great, consider supporting the channel. I wanna thank you in advance, I'm glad that you're here. And now let's dive right into our fragrances that you can buy at Sephora and perfume stores alike. One more thing before we go. If you're interested in the first part of this, I guess, series, I'll link it in the top for you and you can watch it after the video. I will also link it in the bottom if you wanna watch it afterwards. Appreciate it, let's go. The first one that we're gonna go over is H24 by Hermes. It's a daring release for 2021 and it comes 15 years after Terre de Hermes, which is a wonderful fragrance, very elegant. Now, H24, like I said, is very daring and it has some new notes and it is formulated and created by Christina Nagel for her Hermes. This one here has some metallic notes in it. There's also a note called uh, Narcissus in this one, which is kind of a green uh, floral note with a little hint of an animalic scent. To me, when, you wear, when I wear H24, it's definitely green at the very beginning, but once that sort of goes away, it always reminds me of grandma ironing in the back and that sort of metallic uh, steam that comes off the ironing board and the iron. It kind of has that in the background. To me, it's very nostalgic when I wear this one uh, and kind of cozy and beautiful. It's a well-researched new fragrance. Uh, I understand that they did lots of research on this one, trying to figure out where the fragrance world might be going. H24 for me is a great release. It's a little bit daring for Hermes, but it's a good one to get your nose on if you want to smell completely different than the ordinary blue fragrances that have been out for a few years. Also, the longevity and uh, projection is going to be on the medium range. It's not going to be too big. It does stay somewhat linear all day. And I feel that this one to me is a, on the kind of unisex side, just a little bit. Maybe just a tad on the masculine side, but I think that a, a woman could completely wear this one. It's such a unique scent, and I think you should get your nose on it. The next one is gonna be a Prada fragrance. It's from 2012. In my last video, I did the uh, Prada Lum. In this one, I decided to put the Luna Rossa. And I think that if you go in there and you smell some, I think you really have to get your nose on the original Prada Luna Rossa from 2012. This one is going to have some lavender, some bitter orange at the top. There's gonna to be some mint in there, very light. It's a beautiful fragrance that still stands out and you can totally wear today. To me, it's not dated at all. It dries down in a lovely ambroxan and some umbrette. And there's also a little bit of clary sage in this fragrance. So the ambroxan, I love the ambroxan dry down on fragrances. So this is a really great fragrance that I still love wearing. Now, of course, this year in 2021, they came out with a new one. So if you don't want to go with something older and classic from them, then you can go with the new one from 2021 which is Prada Luna Rossa and it's Ocean. This one is completely different from the original. This one's going to have some Artemisia in the very top. There's also gonna be a little bit of lavender in, there, lavender in there, some iris. What sticks out in this one is that it has a caramel tone or a base note in here, which as it dries down, it's going to be a little bit like marzipan to me. So you got the soft iris, you got the caramel note, and you got the bergamot and artemisia opening. It's a really beautiful fragrance. There's also a little bit of suede in there. It makes it nice and smooth. Actually, let's give it another spray. Now, this is not the typical blue fragrance that you would imagine. This is one is quite unique. It's more like the deep depths of the ocean at nighttime. It's a really, beautiful fragrance for 2021. It's a good choice if you want to go in there and get something a little bit newer. Released this year. But not only Hermes took us by surprise in the last few years, or the last two years, I should say. In 2020, uh, Dior released a fragrance called Dior Homme. Now the original was released in 2011, I believe, and it had an iris note, some cocoa, it was very powdery, a beautiful fragrance. Uh, if you can get your nose on that one, and, and if you don't have a bottle yet, even the intense 
amazing fragrance. For, so for 2020 though, they completely changed it around. I think Francois de Marchi is behind this one. And they completely changed the fragrance. What you're going to have in this fragrance, the reformulation of the good old original Dior Homme, is going to be some pink pepper and some LME at the very top, so it has a little bit of a punginess to it. The iris is completely gone. Cashmere wood, uh, cedar, and patchouli in the middle. It's a quite beautiful fragrance. It's completely different than the original one, so you gotta give it a little bit of time. There's also going to be some Haitian vetiver in this one, white musk, and there's also a lot of ISOE Super, which is a great fragrance on its own, or note on its own. I like it. It's been a little bit controversial. Of course, people were expecting a, a new, or a redo, or a tweak on the original instead of going completely different. But as we've seen with Hermes, I guess everybody wants to, is looking for something new. And if you want a fragrance that doesn't smell like anything else you have out there, your OM 2020 is gonna do it for you. If you have it, let me know in the comments what you think of this remake of the good old Dior OM with the Iris Note. But let's move right on to our next one, and it's gonna be one from Cartier. The original came out in 1992, I believe it was, and it was sort of an aromatic, freshy, kind of, with a little bit of a dirtiness to it. It had a green note, there's some lavender in this one, and I really, back in the 90s, I did wear this one and really enjoyed it. I wore this one and I believe I wore uh, Carolina Herrera, the original one. So it was really beautiful. And so in 2020, they came out with a new one and uh, they made a perfume, which has the same bottle. They look alike. This one is going to have a black one and the new one is going to have a blue stone in the top. And this one right here is a complete new iteration of the original. It's a much deeper note though. You can kind of still tell that it's a Cartier de Pasha from you know 1992. However, this one is going to be much more woody. It's going to be a lot deeper. There's, it's warm and spicy. It has a little bit of vanilla in there. It's a really beautiful and extremely well done scent. Something great to go out in, something Oh, it's got a little bit of an animalic side to it, maybe from the patchouli or something. There's a little bit something in there that, you know, gives it, it might turn somebody off if they're not used to like the strong or uh, scents. But I personally really love this fragrance. They did a great job on this one. Also, the longevity of this Pasha perfume for 2020 is going to be quite long. I mean, you got eight hours plus. The projection is also a little bit bigger because it's an unusual scent. I believe the, the unusual kind of note that's in there is Simrise. It has a little bit of an animalic smell to it. It's really a beautiful fragrance. I believe Mathilde Laurent did this fragrance and she did an exquisite job on the recreation of a good old original Pasha. Get yourself a whiff of this one. If you, It's a little bit more on the mature side. I think definitely 25 and older. Beautiful scent to go out in with a little hint of animalic. Beautiful. And I do realize that we've been talking a lot about the iris note, and I guess people are kind of getting away from it a little bit, you know, uh, with the reformulation of the new Dior, which leaves the iris out completely, and I'm a real lover of the original Intense, which is kind of hard to find now. So I figured I'd put a fragrance in here that will give you a little bit of an iris note that's still available at the stores today. And that's the 2018 release and it's Gentleman Shivashi. Gentleman Shivashi is uh, formulated by Natalie Larson and Olivier Cresp. And it's going to remind you a whole lot of your intents. So what we have in here is we definitely have the lavender and the pepper right up top, and you're going to have some cloves and cinnamon right in the middle. It's a beautiful, warm, and spicy fragrance. It's also going to have some tonka beans, some patchouli, and some benzoin. It's a beautiful fragrance that's completely reminiscent, a little bit more on the gentlemanly side. If you like the Irish note, this one is readily available, and you can still get it at the stores. The original code by Armani was launched in 2016, I believe it was. And it is a heavy, thick scent, quite beautiful. Antoine Maison Dieu is behind this one. And I really enjoy it. 
Uh, there's a lot, you know, there's nutmeg, lavender, there's some cardamom in there. It's a pretty deep scent for like, you know, the cold of the winter. It's an absolute stunner. But personally, I like Armani Code Absolute just a little bit better. It's a little bit softer. It has some vanilla in there. It's powdery. It's sweet. It's not quite as dense and deep as the Code the original code from 2016. I believe our Armani uh, Absolu came out in, let's see, 2019. For me, it's just a little bit better all around scent because you can wear it, you know, in the spring, you could wear it in the fall, you could wear it in the winter. Summertime, it might just be a little bit too warm, too cozy, but it's a beautiful scent and it's readily available in the stores. And that's Armani Code, the Absolu. It's a better version that's a little bit more versatile than the original code from 2016. Both of these are made or created by uh, Antoine Maison Dieu. So if you like this DNA from the original, go out and give yourself a little tester of this one. It's a little bit more versatile and also readily available at the perfume stores. But let's move right on to our next one. The next one's gonna be a Valentino. And this Valentino Uomo, it's 2014. I believe Olivier Paul just behind this one. And to me, this is a gourmand fragrance. It's one of my favorite ones to wear out on a date. It is very soft. It's very elegant fragrance with some chocolate. There's some nuttiness in there. There's a little bit of leather, a little bit of coffee. It's very soft, very elegant. Uh, the projection is sort of closer in. It's a little bit more on the intimate side. Very, very, very delicious. One of the better ones with a note of hazelnut in it. So it is definitely a gourmand. You know, you got the hazelnut, the chocolate, the coffee, the beautiful soft scent, absolutely great for a date. It will make you irresistible. 2014, it's a good one to get your nose on. It's not, the projection is not too great, but you know, out on a date or something like that, you don't want it to be too loud anyway. Beautiful scent from Olivier Polge for Valentino. Let's move on. The next one's gonna be an Yves Saint Laurent and it is Y de Eau de Parfum. Now you can go out and of course you can get the 2017 release from uh, Dominique Robillon, uh, which has, you know, aldehydes, there's some pineapple in there. Also, I think the dry down is ambergris. It stays a little bit fresher and greener longer. However, I think that the 2018 release for me is the better choice. I like scents just to be a little bit more on the deeper side. And I really love the way this one starts out and it dries down. The aldehydes are completely gone and you're gonna have some amber wood, some tonka bean in the base, some olibanum as well. This one's gonna be a little bit of an apple, bergamot, ginger at the very top. It's a beautiful scent, just a little bit on the deeper side. And for me, this one, when I first sprayed it, I just liked it better. The original 2017 is more along the lines of like what everything else smelled like. That's Y from Yves Saint Laurent. It's a great scent, a little bit on the fresher side. We're gonna go a little bit fresher for the next two, uh, since we kind of started out a little bit on the heavy side. Next one we're gonna do is gonna be, of course, you have to go out and get yourself a whiff. If you like the original, or if you like the niche fragrance, you know, Crete, then you have to go and you have to try Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc is gonna be along the same lines as the Creed fragrance, you're gonna have your bergamot, you're gonna have your pineapple. It also has a really wonderful dry down with the uh, Ambroxan in its base. Now, on this one, there were three perfumers that worked on this one. There is uh, Antoine Maison Dieu, there's uh, Jody Fernandez, I believe, and Oliver Pershu. You got three really heavy hitters working on Mont Blanc. Uh, at first, this one came out and everybody's like, oh my God, you know, it's just like all, you know, another Aventus clone. But I think for the price that you can get this one for, it stands on its own. It's a really good fragrance for the price that it is in the lines of. It doesn't smell, of course, you know, as refined as Aventus. But if you like that sort of scent DNA, you can wear this one all day long. You can wear it evening, you can wear it at night, you can wear it when you go out. It's a beautifully rounded fragrance. And if you wanna keep it simple, 
and just have you know one fragrance I th that not spend too much on it but you know spray it all the time I think this is a really great choice if you like the fresher DNA with a nice umbroxan dry down I think everyone's come to love it over the last couple of years at first it was controversial but I think now people really do see the value in this fragrance but let's move on to our last one my last one is going to be a chimichoo fragrance it's a beautiful freshy smells like lemonade when you first spray it. I know we were in the cooler days, but if you're looking for a nice scent that you can wear when it starts getting warmer or in the high heat, this one is gonna have some you know, citrus in it, some bergamot, some mandarin orange. It's a beautiful dry down with the vetiver and the patchouli. There's also some umbroxan and some musk in the base of this one. It's one of the fragrances that you can get for a really good price. It's still out in the stores. And when you wear it, it actually gets better as it starts drying down. And it starts off very nice, like fresh lemonade. It's a beautiful scent. I think it's my favorite one from the Chimichu line at this point. And that's it. Go out, get yourself a sample of these fragrances. I think some of these you should have in your collection, if not all of them like me. These are all designers. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Thanks in advance. Until next time, I want you to take good care of yourself. Always smell nice. And I'll talk to you soon. Until then, Centrail.